Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. The purpose of our organization is to create the open source blueprints, tools, tutorials, and resources necessary to build complete teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities all over the world. The format of these blogs, and this is our video blog update number 32, weekly update number 32, covering our progress for the week of September 30th October, through October 6th, 2013, so it's last week. And the format of these uh, blogs is always to go through a quick overview of everything that we've accomplished in the last week, and then to come back around and discuss in detail uh, what's happening or what has happened in the last week behind the scenes and what the plan is for the upcoming week. Um, and uh, everything that we're doing, for those that don't know, our goal is to be the change we want to see in the world and to be the architects of the future. And we think that if we make this process of architecting the future affordable enough and easy enough through open source free sharing and demonstration, and the tools and tutorials and resources, we feel that it will become self-replicating. And as more teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities are built that then teach others how to create teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities also, we're creating a solution model that creates additional solution creating model. And this is how we see ourselves being the architects of the future, being the ones that can create the change that will transform the planet and create a place that works for everyone. So without further ado, oh, and as always, uh, if you're interested as I'm going through our list of everything that we've accomplished, we always have a written blog, and the way that we do these written blogs, we include links to all the details, we include uh, the most recent screen capture and image exports for everything that we're working on behind the scene, and all those other details, and that blog link is in the YouTube, if you go to YouTube and you click in the video description, or of course, if you're watching this currently, to see the most current video blog, uh, then you can just go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash one dash community dash blog and you can read our blog there. So without further ado, let me jump into it. Uh, we continue to move forward on our food infrastructure. Everything that we've done in food infrastructure this last week is really behind the scenes. We uh, have finished, we're now done with about 50% of our food forest plans. So there's 300 different plants that will be planted as part of the One Community Food Forest. And we have, behind the scenes, completed image selection and detailed descriptions and planting guidelines and cultural considerations for half of those, about 50 to 60 percent. So we've also, behind the scenes, completed all of the Zen Aquapini images uh, behind the scenes, which is another one that's got... I can't remember how many, I think it's got 60 or 70 different plants in there. So now the formatting, once we choose the images, then we got to format those images and prepare them to be put up on the website as open source content. So that's moving along. For pod one, uh, this last week we have begun our search for a plastic vendor and we're quite a ways along that path. Um, we've also begun, Philip Gill has submitted the first basics of interior earth bag village design. Philip Gill is a an interior design architect and he is creating the interior designs for several, several different setups of what the earth bag village domes will look like on the inside so it's starting to happen in 3d and i'll post an image of that as well um, the bathroom materials and septic details research was done a couple weeks ago and we have added those to the site so you can now go to the materials section if you go to the earth bag village hub and then you click on the materials section, you can go and you take a look, or of course go to the written blog and see the details on that. Um, Sago Center 3D continues to move forward. We've got some more uh, details that we've done as far as the kitchen redesign. There's a whole bunch of redesign work that's going into making that kitchen a professional kitchen. And we added in the pool details as well um, now. So we finalized the natural swimming pool, which is another big piece that we're open sourcing. And we've dropped that into 3D, all the windows are up. I think I reported on that last week. And so um, moving forward on the Sago Center 3D as well. And then uh, we've started an engineers and 3D people search, a global search to build our team even more with engineers and 3D people. So just related to infrastructure, we're gonna put out a couple videos and we're creating a couple pages and we're really, really searching to build a bigger team with 3D because we've still got Got a lot of different pieces of the project, a lot of amazing people like Devin Porter that's working on 3D. Um, we also got Dave uh, Wallen 
is working on 3D for us. And then, of course, Jen, our member of our team, is working on 3D. And Avery's done some 3D for us. We've got a whole bunch of different pieces, though, that need a lot more work than 3D. And Carl Harris, of course, is working on 3D. And so uh, we started a call out for more 3D folks uh, and engineers. We need engineering. So lots of engineering work that needs to be done. A lot of our plans are getting to the point where engineering is really the final step and then any adjustments that we need to make to those. And then, of course, the uh, sustainable living stuff needs lots of 3D work, and, or sorry, engineering work. And I'll talk about that more when I go into detail. Uh, Education for Life program. We've got our first mind map template is done. Mind maps are going to be our lesson plan template. I'll talk about that more in a minute um, and creating lesson plans. And we've got Ethos Solutions are moving forward. We've got a new, uh, couple new Ethos Solutions that we're featuring. And so I'll share links for those and the Diva Cup and a couple others. You know, Architecting the Future, being architects of the future isn't just about our project. We like to feature other projects as well. And we use Ethos Solutions as a training tool for people on our team to do website design, to learn website design. And uh, I'll talk about that more in detail too. So first five years outline uh, page has been updated also. So we'll put that out as well under the web, talking about what the first five years of one community is gonna look like, what our goals are. And then um, I wanna make an announcement next week, next Monday the 14th, Jack Reed, the author of The Next Evolution and myself are gonna do a radio show, a live radio show, call-in radio show. And the purpose of that is to answer people's questions for how it is that what we're creating is truly the solution for everything, how it addresses every aspect of sustainable uh, society, every, every aspect, every problem that the world is dealing with right now. One community, the community planet model, and there's a lot of people, other people out here that are starting to realize that we have the ability to create solutions to these things. And so we're going to do a live radio show to talk about all that stuff. I'll talk a little bit more in depth on that as well as I go into detail. And then last but not least, um, world change the one community way. I want to talk a little bit about what that means. What's it mean to be the architects of the future? So let me wrap around to the beginning first. And we'll talk about those details in depth. Food forest plants. We are 50 to 60% done on food forest. The complete infrastructure, food infrastructure of one community is meant to ultimately sustainably feed uh, over 500 people to create complete food cell sufficiency, uh, the ability to completely feed over 500 people from the one community property. And the food forest is one of the biggest components of that. We've got the aquapines, the wallapines, the food forest. Um, food forest has over 300 different plant species that have been selected by our botanist to uh, be a part of that. And he's going through all the research we've put in hundreds of hours of research have gone into the food infrastructure. And so we're 50 to 60% done with the food forest and arc and cataloging all of these different plants and having all the details and planting guidelines. And then of course, when we get to the property and we plant all this stuff, we'll be accessioning it all as part of our open source botanical garden model. So if you go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash botanical garden, you can read about the open source botanical garden and what that model and what that has to do with our food infrastructure and how our food infrastructure is part of that model. And so uh, 50 to 60 percent of the plants are done behind the scenes now with complete planting guidelines, cultural considerations, descriptions, an image, and they're broken up into sections in overstory, um, understory, the ground cover, the vines, and all these details. And then of course within those categories we also have medicinal plants versus other edible plants, etc. We've broken them all up into categories. So an immense amount of work, immense amount of progress, and um, just in the last week now we've finished up to about the 50-60% mark, and hopefully in the next few weeks we can finish the rest of them. Just a ton of work. So coming along. Also behind the scenes, our team has um, put together or finished the editing of all the images for Xenopini 1. So if you want to see the details of what these kinds of things look like when they're finished, Go to our Aquapini and Wallapini food infrastructure page. Go to the Tropical Atrium food infrastructure page. And you can see the amount of work and energy that goes into every single plant that we'll be planting. And so um, we finished Aquapini, the, the large-scale food production Aquapini. We finished Wallapini 1. We finished Wallapini 2, Wallapini 3. And now we are working on the Zen Aquapini, which is more of a personal um, food production, well, produce enough food to supplement the diet for probably a whole city block. 
but the idea is to build something that's really beautiful. It's part of the open source garden, botanical garden model, but for just people living in uh, maybe a rural or even a suburban or uh, urban area, they'd be able to build something like this in their in their backyard. And so in place of a greenhouse, and because it's in the ground, have more stable temperatures, it has a much lower profile so that it doesn't completely blot out your backyard. And the idea of the way that we're designing these is to be teacher demonstration houses for what's prop, for what's possible to build a cloud forest uh, internal environment or to build a uh, tropical moist internal environment where people have a beautiful place to go, even in the dead of winter, even in some place like Montana, you know, or Iowa, there where you have a place to go that would be a, a comfortable environment and a really beautiful environment that produces year-round food and just a great place to hang out. And so all of the images for the first, for all of the uh, plants that are going to be planted in there have now been edited. And actually, if you go to the website uh, right now, until we get that stuff up on the website, there's actually a link that you can click and you can see, like, the raw data. You can see us working on that kind of stuff behind the scenes in Google Docs is how we get all of our work done since we're organizing from around the world and people all over the place. So, um, yeah, that's it for food infrastructure for Pod 1. Uh, the Earth Bag Village, we've got a lot of progress going forward on that. We're doing a lot of research right now. We've got, uh, we're doing, we're ser searching for right now a plastic vendor. So if you know somebody that's an amazing plastic vendor with national distribution and even better yet, international distribution, we're looking to form a partnership. And so a lot of work is going on behind the scenes right now to find that person. We did tons of research on plastic. We found one international distributor we could buy direct from China. But we think that we can find somebody that's U.S. based that probably provide better prices and uh, not have to be buying containers of plastic from China. And so, um, but we're looking for whoever can provide the best price for the consumer. Uh, as long as they have ethical business practices, we're really looking for the highest good of all organization. And so we've done all the research that we need to on plastic, but now we're looking for that ultimate vendor to provide us with the plastic that will be. Uh, the covering for the aquapinis and wallapinis, for the tropical atrium, and then also flexible plastic for hoop houses so and, uh, and other greenhouse design on the property. In addition to all that, I mentioned that we've got interior design is moving forward thanks to Philip Gill. So interior architect, he has given us the first basics of what he's starting to place in, you know, interior design for the Earth Bag Village which you'd think it's really easy, but it's not when you're talking about round domes. You know, you've got circular structures, and so, you know, most furniture is square, and then we've got the um, rocket mass heaters as well, the rocket stoves that need to be placed in there, and then working with these 200 square foot structures that are designed to be able to be built by most people in most counties without a permit because they fall below the permitting needs. You know, and they don't have plumbing in there and, and uh, minimal. You can put in, you can put on a solar panel and add electricity. Ours obviously will have electricity. And so, um, but being able to build those without a permit. All of ours need to be permitted. But more importantly, we're starting to go in and get into the process of creating the internal 3D design and details of what what the insides of these structures can look like and how cool that can be. And so I'll post some images from Philip Gill, the first just basic exports but to show you that it is moving forward some of the cool stuff just kind of start to see it going into place we love to share the evolution as it's happening so um, that's what's going on with that and then uh, we've got the pod one uh, materials and septic details pages and research results are now up on the website so you can see all of those materials and the septic details are now on the materials page um, so you can see exactly what it takes to build a communal bathroom, what it takes to build a communal earth dome shower, everything from uh, you know towel hangers to faucets to you name it, everything you know toilets as well as and now then of course the toilets for the vermiculture. So we have a traditional toilet which ties into the septic, and then we have the vermiculture toilets that tie into vermiculture, which is super eco-friendly uh, processing and recycling of all of that waste using worms and composting. And so the design of those bathrooms is a really big deal. And the combination of traditional septic as well as the vermiculture creates something that can be built pretty much anywhere, should be able to be built. And, well, once we demonstrate it, it'll be able to be built in most counties. 
because it integrates traditional septic as well as non-traditional septic and we'll do the testing and all the research development and everything's being done so that we can prove that these are safe, prove that they work and then as more and more counties get on board doing the dual version because it meets county code and then you have this secondary one and you can prove that it's safe and that it's something worth doing eventually we'll get to the point where you can just build the vermiculture and demonstrate that that works. And so this is a big part of this idea of architects of the future, like, hey, how do we create civilization from the ground up so it's more sustainable? And waste reuse is, uh, and repurposing, human waste repurposing is a big part of that. And so we're excited to have all of those materials and details up on the website. Uh, also, um, Sago Center 3D is moving forward, I mentioned that. So we've got the natural pool is de designed now thanks to the great work of Meg West and Jennifer Engelmeyer and Rob Jerdy has also uh, has, has worked, put tons of work into this. And so those natural pool designs are finally done as far as what it's going to look like, the layout. And Rob is now just working on the filtration stuff. We posted an update on that couple weeks ago and so now we're putting the final touches on that and then we'll be able to put we'll be able to open source all of the purchase orders and plans and everything for that as well but we're excited to say that that natural pool design has now been dropped into 3d and uh, put in there so you can see what that looks like we've also added in the final sliding glass door to the back of the dining dome uh, we continue to move forward Carl Harris continues to do work working on the inside of the dining dome and doing the little details and touch-ups on making that uh, commercial kitchen which will feed anywhere from 150 to 200 people at a time uh, getting those final details done and then uh, now we're putting also uh, all of the which hopefully will be done probably maybe before I post this blog we're starting to put up all of the railings around the second floor of the Sago Center so big visible updates that look really cool and so I'll post some pictures of all that stuff as well. Um, let's see. Oh, I said we're starting to look for engineers and 3D people. So we've got an amazing team that's working all this stuff. We have put in thousands of hours of work on everything that we are doing. And uh, we've definitely passed 10,000, 20,000, I think we're probably, yeah, I don't know, thousands, thousands and thousands of hours, years of work has gone into this. And some of the stuff that we're getting to the point now where engineering is really the final piece. Um, with some of the traditional structures, engineering is not going to be that big of a deal. We've run it by engineers, but we need to do the final calculations. You know, we've seen, we know that engineering is sound for everything, but we need the actual final calculations. And in the case of some of the sustainable stuff, like the Earthbag Village, it's quite, it's going to be quite a task to do the engineering on that. And so we're putting out a global call for engineers uh, starting this week. And we're creating three pages or two pages, one for engineers and one for 3D people. We might create another one for architects, although most of the architectural work is all done. But we'd love to add uh, to our architectural team just because we keep coming up with little things that still need work. But the biggest two areas that we're looking for right now are 3D graphics, people that are familiar with SketchUp and like to join our amazing SketchUp team and bring all this 3D work to uh, to its its uh, conclusion and get it all wrapped up because we put we've got a huge foundation in place. We just got so many other things, so many pieces of the project need to be worked on that we could use another three or four people, honestly, just doing 3D work and I'd probably keep busy. And same thing with engineers. We're looking to build an engineering team that's going to want to be with us and to benefit from collaborating and consulting with one community in that when we start building this and we continue to open source everything we're doing but now with actual videos and uh, more tools and resources of everything actually going up then the engineers that we have will become the go-to people for everybody that wants to modify what it is that we're doing so our goal is to teach people how to duplicate what it is that we're doing when it comes to modifications and evolving it that's why we're building the foundation right that's why we're creating the foundation you know, as architects of the future, our goal is to create a solid foundation that people can then evolve beyond, that people can build on top of. And so we're looking for the engineers that would like to help us right now to get those final pieces in place, to be able to have all of the building details that are necessary for permitting and everything like that, and then to be the go-to people as we start building this, and people start saying, wow, and creating additional duplicate uh, communities 
villages and teacher demonstration cities around the world and then they start modifying that that's where the engineering team is going to come into play that's where the 3d team is going to come into play as being the paid consultants to help people who want to change that anybody who wants to modify that and make it any different we want to build the team right now to get the pieces in place and then have the team in place so that we have a place that we can send people because people won't have to pay for all that foundational work that's what we're creating those blueprints all this 3d work that we're doing we create the whole village model so they're there so people can see them hundreds thousands of hours of work already done we're giving all that away so that people have an easy an affordable foundation and then they could take the money that they normally would have invested in just these basics and jumping through the initial hoops and jumping through uh, doing all that foundational work that is taking so much time and energy instead they go great we have this huge body of knowledge we have this huge body of work now we can build on top of that make it even better and so that's really our whole purpose here is that we can provide that solid foundation Right? If we can make it easy enough and affordable enough, I keep saying this, and I know a lot of these videos are redundant because they're all meant to be standalone videos, so I repeat myself because I want the message to get out there. I want people, anybody who watches even one of these videos, want them to understand what it is that we're doing. Because once we create the foundation, then human ingenuity, human creativity will take off from there. And that's how we're making this whole thing mainstream. We want to create the do-it-yourself uh, resources and and instruction manual for people with videos and multimedia tools to make this totally duplicable and then to help pe teach people how to add to that global archive how to add to this information database and then watch as people evolve it with their own ideas and that becomes the addition to what we're doing so anyway <laughs> we, we're launching an engineers and a 3d uh, campaign global campaign right now to really find uh, these folks to add to our team to become a part of what it is that we're creating and to join us in creating historic world change for the highest good of all become the architects of the future with us and uh, and so we're excited to be sharing that this week as well launch all that stuff this week um, so that's all of our infrastructure stuff uh, education for life program is moving along man. we have researched every major uh, alternative education method out there, Waldorf, Regio, uh, Montessori, the ones that people really know, Orf, Bloom's Taxonomy, Study Tech, uh, Aid Intelligences, all the stuff we've studied that. We have studied what all of the uh, education department guidelines are for homeschooling and schooling and created a template, the core curriculum template, which I shared with you last week. And so this last week, we finally brought together and created the mind map, the first mind map that we're going to use, the template for lesson plans. And so right now, it's not filled out. It's just the basic template. Looks really pretty and starting to evolve. I'll post a copy of this in the written blog so people can see what it is that we're doing. And um, it's pretty amazing. This is going to be the lesson plan. So you have a lesson plan that is tailorable and adaptable to any age for a multi-age classroom, for community-based schooling, for a homeschooling environment, for a traditional environment as well, usable tool for any environment, something that would go really well hand-in-hand -hand with something like the Khan Academy. Uh, and then we have strategies for teaching that combine multiple education uh, focuses into one lesson plan. So you're teaching social studies and math simultaneously. And so, and connecting all these ideas together so that there's a solid why for it so it's not just memorization and reading a book it's it's actual application hands-on application and understanding how to use these skills how to use the knowledge that you're learning and to apply it in real situations and so the mind map is designed the formatting that we're using for creating all this is to have a central weekly theme and then within that weekly theme to teach all of the different subjects, science, social studies, English, math, all of the different subjects around that theme within the context of that theme so that you have a real reason why you're applying all the different knowledge. And then once with the mind map through that template, you can teach to the level of the individual student instead of just teaching a set structure. So the idea is, okay, we're teaching within the context, maybe the theme for the week is the human body, or maybe it's like summer or fall or something like that. And then around that, you have all of the different, the different arms of education, math, science, social studies, like I was saying. 
And what you would do is you would teach to the individual. So the math lesson plan in relation to the human body or, say, the season of fall would be very different for a high school kid, obviously, versus a grade school kid. And it might be very different for a third grader, uh, one third grader versus a different third grader based on where they are as individuals. And so we're creating a model, a flexible model, that can be applied for doing just that. And so this mind map design is the product of weeks and weeks of discussion of the education team working on this and then looking at the big picture of the curriculum, which was hundreds of hours of work to bring that together and the different teaching strategies and the strategies of being, which we finished a few weeks ago. All this different stuff is coming together. And so now we're moving into creating open source and free shared lesson plans. And the model is being designed, the mind map is designed so that anybody can add to it. So somebody can look at this picture, this graphic, and see what the general idea is of how we were thinking of teaching it. And then the global collaborative can submit ideas and we can add those ideas to the website to build it as an archive, as an ever-expanding global collaborative archive of ed educational ideas, tools, tutorials, and resources indefinitely. And so that's where the Education for Life program is going. We're super excited to have finished um, this first mind map in this last week. And so now moving forward, we're starting to work on lesson plans. And what we're doing is we're taking the different subjects like math and we're putting them on a timeline. Like where do you start from number recognition, learning how to count, all the way up to high level calculus, trigonometry, that kind of stuff. What does that look like? And then how do you break it down? And we have a format that we're gonna be creating for visually representing that. So when a child engages math, Instead of saying, oh, you have to do it this way, it's more spheres of knowledge that you're learning. And as you accomplish what you need to learn in this sphere, then you're ready for this sphere. Or if you're ready to tackle this with enough hands-on support, we'll teach you in this sphere, knowing that you'll learn this sphere in the process. And so I've been practicing this with my son for uh, five years now, and the results are phenomenal, amazing. He loves education, loves learning, because it doesn't seem like learning. It's all hands-on, just play. But the end result is a five-year-old that can do algebra. So as one example. And the whole point is here, and that may not be for every kid. You know, he just takes to it. For other kids, the idea is to be able to have an education program that will be maximally adaptable to any kid, wherever they are, wherever they're coming from, whatever age they enter into this education program to be able to assess where they're at, to help them assess where they're at, and then to create a collaboration between the teacher and the learner, where they're both teaching and learning, meaning the learner is there to teach the teacher as much as the teacher is there to teach the learner. Those roles, it's a collaboration of how can I be a better teacher with how can I be a better learner and how can we work together to create our shared goals to achieve what it is that you want as a, leader, as a learner and what it is that I want to evolve as a teacher in this relationship. And so we have a whole process of uh, looking at that as well and creating a new education paradigm in that. It's, uh, it's another piece that's got hundreds of thousands of hours of work into it. Tons of people have put a lot of time and energy into it, different perspectives coming together and then analyzing what's out there, bringing all this together. So, um, yeah, so the Education for Life program is moving forward. Uh, the other couple things that I mentioned, so we've got Etho Solutions which are moving forward. We've got a couple Ethos Solutions. For those who don't know, we run a website called ethosolutions.org, and the purpose of that website is to share forward-thinking organizations, um, products, and ideas in a format of just featuring. We just like to shine the spotlight on groups that are doing great things, people that are living for the highest good of all, that are doing things that want to see a better world, that are that are, that are promoting a, a more positive living environment for everybody and taking action and, and doing something. And so we've got a couple of those that we are going to share. I'll add links to those into the, uh, well, well, I won't. We'll add links to these into the blog, uh, the written blog as well. And, uh, and so, and I was saying we use the Ethos Solutions as a training tool. So when people come on the team that want to learn how to do website design, or add to their website design skills, Ethos Solutions is where we start. It's like, okay, plug into Ethos Solutions, practice these things, and let's see you know, how you do, and then we hands-on help to bring them up to speed and how it is that we do all of our website design because ultimately our goal as an organization is to have 20 or 30 people, you know, and our initial pioneer team of 50 people 
it would be great if half of those people knew how to do website design. So because of our open source goals and because of the level that we're sharing. And so anybody that wants to engage that process, and we're always looking for opportunities to bring people up to speed on website design and optimization so that we can help to spread the word even more and continue to build our amazing uh, marketing team and website design team because our website just, it grows every single week we add more content to it and so the more people that we have that can work on that stuff the better and Ethos Solutions is a great website where we get to give back to the world we get to focus on other people doing amazing stuff creating really cool things and uh, in the process help to fine-tune our own skills and create uh, interesting and useful content for people so a lot of people don't know what the history of, say, Wikipedia is or what the history of YouTube is. Well, go to ethosolutions.org and you can read about that. Like, wow, where did Wikipedia come from? Where did YouTube come from? What are these? Who is the Venus Project? You know, check these out. We've done features on all of them. And uh, they're outstanding. So um, that's going along. And uh, two other things. I said uh, we've got a show coming up. Jack Reed is doing a show on the House of Hidalgo show. Uh, actually tomorrow, and then Jack Reed and myself are going to do a, a special two-hour show if we have enough people that call in. So check it out. Check out the link on our website or on our Facebook page, Facebook uh, one, or sorry, facebook.com forward slash one community updates or one community fans. Take a look on those sites and get the details for joining us. Monday, Columbus Day, is, uh, is going to be the day of the show where Jack and I do the show together. And the purpose of that show is to really, really demonstrate how the solution for everything is the solution to anything. And what that means is, is if we build the solution for everything, it's the solution to anything. And we, get a sh and we want to talk about that in detail on that show. It's a live show with call-ins for people to call in. And if you're watching this after the date, because now we're just talking about everything the last week and what's coming up, uh, if you click on the, the link to this if you go to the YouTube the description link you can listen to that show and see how it went if you're listening if you're watching this video in the future you know and you want to see how that show went but if you're watching this video currently mark your calendar 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time we're gonna do that call in show if you have any questions about one community and Jack Reed if you don't know who he is he's the author of the next evolution which is a book that's almost identical to the one community model we really share this vision for the highest good of all and how to create a planet that works for everybody. And so if you're available on Columbus Day, Monday, at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, call in with your questions. Ask us, well, what about this? How would it work? A lot of people say, well, that's just, that, you know, you can never create a perfect society. And that might be true, but we can definitely create a society that works way better than what's going on right now. Really, really demonstrate a consciousness for the highest good of all and what's possible with that consciousness when applied to all of the current problems of our civilization and creating a new model, a new paradigm to address all of those issues simultaneously, which is what One Community is all about. And so that video, that, that call is going to be about that. It's really going to be answering caller questions and talking about what highest, the consciousness for the highest good of all is and what it's capable of. And that all comes down to, you know, what is world change the one community way? What is world change the, uh, from Jack Reed's perspective and the next evolution? Because they're pretty much the same. The idea is that if we bring together the people, if we bring together the resources necessary to make it easy enough, to make it affordable enough, and to demonstrate a way of living that is for the highest good of all and consider, will be considered by most people to be far superior than their current existence, than the traditional model. It's sustainable, it's open source, it's duplicable, but it provides more time with your family, more time with your friends, higher quality food, higher quality water, better air, and it's something that gives more than it takes. We are of the belief that people want that. We, if you look at the world right now, we believe that people already want that, but there's just no clear, viable path to achieve it. And so world change, the one community way, the idea 
with the way that we're doing what it is that we're doing is to create that, to clearly identify that path, to bring together the people in the world that believe, not only believe that it's possible, but want to create it, that want to be the architects of the future, that want to make a difference, that want to create what it is that we know we're capable of as a species and do things a different way. To bring all those people together and then build it and share it. To free share it and open source it and build, continue to indefinitely build the collaboration and the global cooperative of people that get it and want to be a part of it and want to help other people too and create an alternative. Create a way that works for everybody. And as we build these teacher demonstration communities, villages and cities all over the world, and those teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities help other people to build teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities who help other people and other people and other people create a self-replicating model and a global cooperative and collaborative of people, a think tank that's working together to feed information into a central source where people have access to it, like the Wikipedia of sustainability, to take these tools and get them into the hands of people that want them, then people can do what they want with that. But the more sustainable housing that's built, the more sustainable housing that's built. The more sustainable food infrastructure that's built, the more sustainable food infrastructure that's built. The more highest good of all nonprofit and for-profit businesses that are started, the more highest good of all for-profit, nonprofit businesses there will be. And so the idea is more and more this mentality of a way of living that works for the earth works for people, it's sustainable, it's self-sufficient, and it helps spread itself so that the planet works better. And for people that don't buy into it, that don't think it's necessary, that don't want it, that's totally fine. It doesn't matter. The idea is that for the people that do, or maybe somebody just wants to build a sustainable guest house, maybe you don't want an earth bag village, maybe you just want an earth bag guest house that you could build for $5,000 in your backyard and have a really cool artistic guest house. Or maybe you just want to grow a a cool aquapenia or a wallapenia in your backyard so you can produce year-round food that you cannot buy in the grocery store. That's our goal. All those things are goal. Or maybe you just want to start a for the highest good of all nonprofit business or an ecotourism resort. Or maybe you're just interested in the botanical garden piece. Or maybe you're only interested in the highest good of all uh, education for life program. Or maybe you're only interested in the stewardship component. Or maybe you're only interested in the gray water processing. Or maybe you're only interested in the vermiculture bathroom. Maybe it's just, maybe you're only interested in the food forest. I can go on and on and on. The idea is we're creating open source blueprints, tools, tutorials, and lesson plan, or not lesson plans, but instru instruction manuals for all of it. And so that's world change the one community way. That's the architects of the future approach that we're taking. This is our idea of be the change you want to see in the world. And man, our arms are wide open to anybody who wants to join us in creating this. We've got ways to participate that range from just internet participating, just liking our pages and sharing our stuff on the internet is hugely helpful. Just sending uh, love emails that you're supportive of what it is that we're doing. That is also hugely helpful. We love that. And all those things get shared with the team. You know, but for people that really want to be hands-on, man, we got a pioneer team that we're building. We're looking for people that want to move onto the property and actually build all of this. For people that just want to consult and don't really want, aren't interested in packing up, moving onto the property, and living in these crazy conditions while we build all this stuff from scratch, we've got a great consulting and partner team. We're always looking for people to join that that group as well. Now, of course, the biggest thing that we're seeking right now, of course, is that one person that sees what it is that we're doing loves the years of work that we put in, understands the complexity and the detail that we're creating, and would like to help us out either by investing in one community or funding one community through our nonprofit organization and helping us get the property off the market. If we could do that, we could share that location, which is a location that we have been working on uh, and, and working and building relationships around for years now, for almost three years. It is ready for us, but we need somebody to help take it off the market. And so um, we've got an amazing crowdfunding campaign that we could run once we did that as well. So um, lots of different ways to participate. Amazing, crazy stuff that's happening. And uh, as always, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody that's supporting us, everybody that's participating in our project, everybody that's following us on Facebook, on Twitter, One Community Org on Twitter. Uh, for subscribing to our YouTube channel. We love to see people subscribing to our YouTube channel to get these weekly updates, following our blog, checking out our new content, 
and uh, you know just participating in whatever way that works for you so um, that's our update update number 32 join us if you want to be an architect of the future too if you'd like to be a part of historic oral change of transformational uh, global change that's what one community is creating and uh, we're always looking for others who would like to be part of it so with that Thank you very much. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're interested. Check out the written blog if you'd like to see all the details that go along with this video and links to all the content and all that. And uh, I will say until next week, namaste. Thank you very much. And uh, until next week, have a good one. Thanks.